Well, fibroblasts have traditionally been thought as purely synthesizing extracellular matrix, but of course it's much more complex than that. And the interaction between fibroblasts within an epithelium is seen as a crucial um, importance for tissue biology. Um, but fibroblasts can differentiate and become activated. They start to express um, different proteins such as smooth muscle actin and become actually contractile, more like muscle cells. Uh, and you see that in important pathological situations. So in wound healing it happens uh, and in the stroma, the tissue surrounding a tumour. So obviously it's an important process that's driving, likely to be driving other processes as well. Yes, well, we thought that um, as we're trying to model tissue biology, we should try and do that as well as we can. Um, fibroblasts, as with most cells in the body, are always subjected to physical forces, including tissue fluid flow. Uh, and there's been some recent information about the microenvironment surrounding a tumour to suggest that the the physical stiffness of that matrix changes in cancer and so the cells get a different kind of signal than they would normally. Well, we came to a workshop that Quasi Vivo put on and uh, after that I thought that it was a really good way of modeling communication originally between different cell types that we could try and tease out some of this communication between epithelial cells and fibroblasts. But in fact, we ended up concentrating more on the fibroblast because of our initial data that showed that even these very low flow levels had a dramatic effect on the fibroblast. We've tried two different flow rates, so 75 microliters per minute and 150 microliters a minute, um, which for most people that study fluid flow uh, is pretty low but we did see differences between the different flow rates. Uh, so it's difficult to determine what is physiological. Uh, the flow is likely to vary. Um, but for us to get consistent results with our cultures, uh, controlling that flow is important. Um, but it might be worth considering, if you're using the system, to, to try a number of different flow rates uh, to see what response you get. Yes, yeah, so when we looked at global gene expression with a gene array, we did see the two different flow rates separate out as far as the effects that they had on the cells. We've not looked into that in detail. Um, the main result that we found was that flow activates these fibroblasts uh, and makes them express proteins like smooth muscle actin. And it does that actually at both flow rates, uh, although we chose to carry on with one flow rate for, for practical reasons. Um, but the gene array certainly separated out genes that were different, differentially expressed at one flow rate versus the higher flow rate, so that there, there is a sensitivity even to those low levels. Yes, so uh, the most surprising finding was uh, that uh, we can stimulate fibroblasts to differentiate into these activated myofibroblasts, and we can do that with flow, and traditionally that's always been done with a growth factor called transforming growth factor beta. That's been well described in the literature for a long time. So we use that as our positive control almost, once we'd seen these changes. But we decided to add TGF beta under flow conditions. And you would expect, uh, I don't know what we expected actually, but we, we found that that down-regulated the response. So if essentially if you're adding flow, which stimulates differentiation, and TGF-beta, which stimulates differentiation, they seem to be antagonizing, the pathways seem to be antagonizing. And in fact, you get a down-regulation of the differentiation response. That was surprising to me, uh, and quite interesting, actually. So we went on to look at the mechanism by which that might occur. Um, and there's a couple of possibilities. Um, flow stimulates endocytosis within the cells. Uh, so because the growth factor mediated um, actions are, are through surface receptors, it's possible that the flow is encouraging internalization of these receptors. So that's one possibility. Um, the other possibility is that flow itself increases 
uh, endogenous TGF beta. So you're adding exogenous TGF beta, but the cells are also making more of it themselves. Uh, and, and with some growth factors, you get what's called a pleiotrophic effect, so a different effect depending what dose you're using. And so it may be that the enhanced levels of TGF beta uh, give you a different response, give you a down regulation. I think it calls into question a lot of work that's done in static culture with fibroblasts or other cell types. It's likely that their responses could be very different from a static culture to a flow situation. So I think um, it's useful to look at both those situations to see. I think we might try to revert to our original um, use of the system, and that was to look at fibroblast communication with epithelial cells, so to have different cells in different chambers, but for them to be communicating uh, freely between each other. That's originally what we were planning to do, but in fact we got distracted because of the uh, quite dramatic effects that we saw purely with the fibroblast. So I think we'll go back to our, our mixed cell system and look at communication and the effects of flow on keratinocytes as, as well as fibroblasts. We tried experiments already, and we've done some preliminary uh, gene array analysis, uh, looking at uh, keratinocytes on their own in a flow environment, uh, but also keratinocytes in communication with fibroblasts in a flow environment. Uh, so I think the, the effects that we've seen on fibroblast differentiation make it likely that communication between um, epithelial cells, keratinocytes, and fibroblasts uh, might well be different under a flow environment uh, than in a static culture. So the main benefit was that we could um, seed our cells onto cover slips and have them um, available for um, staining or gene expression or protein expression uh, on the cover slip and have them communicating with each other uh, in a loop of several um, uh, modules. Um, and to be able to control the flow rate um, over a protracted period of time um, made that possible.